I am hoping no one comes for me in this video because I'm done. Anyway. Um, hi, hello. I really look naked. I'm not. Let me move the camera down. I'm not naked. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start um welcome back to my channel i hope you're okay i hope you're doing well um don't forget to like subscribe or comment down below i really look naked i need to sit back that was weird as hell um if you're new here thank you so much for subscribing um you know and just joining me along the way um my real name is laura for some reason people call me slava sven and slava is still doing the rounds girl we don't know why um but really and truly today was just more like a well, A, I'm not sick anymore, but I've still got pressure here. I did actually come back with laryngitis. Um, <laughs> thanks, Euro Club. <laughs> um, it was just a bit of a, a digest, I guess you could say, of my time at Eurovision this year. Um, there is no hate intended. This is just purely from my experience. Um, you know... I don't wish hate on anyone and what I've seen online the past couple of days is absolutely fucking disgusting. Um, so just know that I'm not coming for anyone. I'm literally just doing it at my time, featuring my broken nail, stunning stuff. But if I go way, way, way back to uh, Mama Hagen, where I was with Noosh, Oz and Shane, and loads of other people. Um, I actually met ESC Scott Dean and his friend Kian. They're, they're so funny to give up. <laughs> go go and give them a subscribe as well because they are the some sort of the funniest people <laughs> you'll actually meet. Um, I was actually backstage. I was actually helping out backstage with Mama Hagen. Thank you, Jens, for that. Um, I do appreciate it a lot. So, you know, I got to talk to the artists and see how they're getting on and stuff. And, um, you know, as you saw in Lucy's live, she was lucky enough to interview them on the red carpet. Um, I don't really remember much of that, sorry to say, because as you probably tell from my vlog, or um, I had to stop doing vlogs at one point. Um, I was very drunk. <laughs> I didn't expect to be that drunk, but I was very drunk. Um, but all the artists I spoke to, all caught up with who I last saw in Barcelona, um... I'm very, very grateful that I got to talk to them and, you know, build this sort of professional relationship with them so, you know, they can just chat any time. Um, so thank you. We then moved on the Sunday while Shane was still with us because Shane went back to Milan the Sunday night and we met Georgie and Chris, another Chris, um, shortly after. But we moved on to my homeland. We went to Sweden. We went to Malmö. We got our press passes, um, you know, we were, I'm sorry to say, but that was the quickest service I've ever had for a press pass, literally, like, Liverpool wasn't even that quick, and you literally got a flask too, like, my mind was blown, <laughs> and the lack of Swedish that I know, you know, I was trying to communicate as much as I could, and plus, helping Noosh, and Oz, and Shane with Danish and Swedish, it was a mishmash of everything. But yeah, we got our press passes. We um we went back to Schopenhagen or Copenhagen, met up with Georgie, um, got our stuff, and then literally just moved to Malmö, where we left Shane in Copenhagen with Georgie. I love Georgie to death. He is the funniest, most cutest Greek, Bulgarian, German guy you'll ever meet. Um, the same with Shane, we are twinning now with the hair, <laughs> officially, um, so go and check out his vlog as well, um, we settled into the house now, we were, because I was still sick, we were staying in a small town just outside Malmö called Lima, um, which is, I guess you could say, kind of known for being a bit wealthy, um, and our Airbnb, um, a massive thank you to Nish for booking that because you scored an absolute gold like gold mine there. It was a six bedroom um, house with two sofas, literally just like a barbecue area with sun lounges and a huge garden and a trampoline. To me, I found that normal because obviously Lynn shopping and you know being in my hometown and stuff like that. When I'm actually at home, you know, it felt normal. Um, but seeing everyone around me that was from Eurovision T because Vinge joined us as well, um, and Ame, 
literally just seeing their faces light up to say that they've scored a gold mine was literally so heartwarming to see and it literally felt like I'm at home now like I can just be full-on Viking if I needed to but still professional and reserved <laughs> so the Sunday night um we did say we wasn't gonna go out but we ordered pizzas um I was doing my motherly thing um I actually set up all the dinners and you know washed up after everyone and things like that as you probably saw in people's vlogs um but we did actually end up going out <laughs> to euro club i think it was or um some other bar can't actually remember and then the monday i believe we stayed in um the monday we actually went to the press center um it was huge it was absolutely huge and i cannot thank the team enough that were there the volunteers that were nice enough to go out their way the security were incredibly friendly, incredibly helpful. I spoke some Swedish to them, but I was also helping other people. And they, they were fluent in English, so we couldn't thank them enough. Um, and that is where I met my Greek family. I've been adopted by Greeks um, from Eurovision Fun. Um, I said hello to OGAE Greece, which I have collaborated with before. I met Chris. I met Chris Corlin. He's officially my new bestie. I met Luke, who you've also seen from Barcelona. Please go give them a subscribe as well. Um, and yeah, I bumped into Costas. Uh, me and Costas, I love that guy so much. Um, we literally were just chatting, getting along. I bumped into Rory again. And, you know, it was like nothing had changed. It was literally like I've gone away for a week vacation from a different like that being my main job I've gone away from a week vacation and then you know I'm back and then I'm back with the family sort of thing um and then I got pulled over to go on Greek TV <laughs> with Chris um because we had a full day of interviews at the time um we unfortunately couldn't interview Ico I'm sorry we were a bit hungover <laughs> um but yeah but we I did actually manage to interview Saba um Hira Bjork, Sara Bonici, um Angelina Mango throughout the week. Um unfortunately couldn't get to go out there, which I'm absolutely gutted about, but you know, in future hopefully if I go to their concerts, fingers crossed I could probably try and interview them, um just to catch up and see how they are if, if you know, where's push comes to shove. Um so yeah, that was the Monday and the Tuesday, you know, we had the semi final one. As you probably saw, I was screaming my lungs out that Lithuania had gone through and Slovenia, which no one said that she would qualify. I told you she would qualify. Everyone's like, hey, Raven won't qualify. She's a warrior. Bitch, I knew. Bitch, I fucking knew. She is Slovenian. She's bringing that Slovenian fire and she fucking did. Thank you. Kvala um, Lepa. And obviously, Lithuania, Lietuva. Um, and that same day, I actually got interviewed by Justas and Beatrice, or Beatrice, um, for Lithuanian TV. I was also interviewed by Delphi as well. So I do love I, but like all of you for, you know, just interviewing me and just making me feel so welcome within the Lithuanian community and the reaction that I've had with look my reaction to Look at Doug. Um, and lots of lots of like Sylvester. He's probably sick of me at this point. <laughs> Sorry, babe. Um, so yeah, that happened. Then the Wednesday things started to atmospherically change. It all of a sudden become very and it, I spoke to ESC Fat Fault Annie about this because I I didn't want to feel like the only one and I didn't want to say anything. It became very cold and very hostile, and the aura just became like everyone was a little bit nervous um because of you know the situation that was at hand we did also hear things of you know people being recorded without their consent people listening in and recording conversations and smoking areas about their consent throughout our time there i actually had a situation where um i was recorded whilst having a conversation with friends in the smoking area now i don't smoke i never have smoked i may have vaped a few times but trust me i'm not a smoker um so i was just out with friends you know people from eurovox andy i love andy to death um and all the guys at eurovox fame eurovision crave i love him too and we were just chatting and stuff and we could feel something was recording us unfortunately um you know so we just had to hide our parties and we went inside swiftly and we didn't want you know any drama whatsoever um and that was that um thursday obviously we all know what happened. I don't need to go into detail. The atmosphere. <laughs> uh, 
the atmosphere just become a little bit cold and hostile. Um, obviously, with Yost Klein, things were developing overnight from that Thursday night. And we came in on the Friday and no one knew. And obviously, you've seen me on Dutch TV. If you are a Dutch subscriber, thank you. And thank you for hearing my voice. Um, I will defend creative freedom and I will defend creative rights for someone that's been done for injustice. And that was Yost Klein. And I will stick by him until the end of whatever was going on with him, even now after the contest. Um, so, you know, things were unfolding there. And, you know, I was on Dutch TV the night before, just literally dancing to Ia Papa and just, you know, having the time of our lives. And then come Friday, we just hear this developing story of what falsely happened. There was no physical contact whatsoever. And we were all in shock and, you know, we were in and out of this press centre, not knowing what to do with ourselves. And, you know, we were told as a warning, as everyone via email, not to film in the press centre, not to show any sound from the press centre, not to show the screens from the press centre. Screens, fair enough. That's not a problem. Wireless microphones were prohibited. It was very strange. And we couldn't work out why that was happening and obviously, top of Yas Klein's situation coming out, we didn't know. Um, and, you know, I was being on Dutch TV saying, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed he wasn't disqualified for potentially what could have happened. Um, but unfortunately, he was silenced. And, you know, come Saturday morning, we were nervous. We were scared. I didn't, I don't think I went out on the Friday. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think I went out on the Friday. Um Oh, no, I did. I did go out on the Friday because I was absolutely rat assed <laughs> And I had the start of laryngitis because um, I had no voice. And Chris, Chris Collin had no voice as well. So we were completely fucked. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then Saturday morning, I cannot explain to you the vibe that was in there. And this is nothing against the media outlets that were there of that certain country. We were all in this boat together. We were all pulling each other together. And we were all holding each other together, trying to work out what was going on. And then we heard about Joost Klein. I was back on Dutch TV, like, being recorded, defending him and saying that it's wrong, that he's being disqualified for something that I knew he was innocent, um, that he didn't do. And, you know, it, I'm not being funny. He done this. That's all he done. To say stop. No means no. Back away. Respect that boundary. Um... And, you know, once we find that out, bless Finns, bless his heart, he was so upset. All my Dutch friends were very upset and it was, it just felt like a massive chunk of heart was missing from that thing. Um, obviously, Eurovision happened, the, the final happened, Switzerland won. I was crying my eyes out that Switzerland won, um, do you know, because we chose peace as a collective and as a whole and we chose freedom and... We was all genuinely scared, not scared, but anxious to what might have happened. And it was very, very bizarre. It was like I was living in a dream or living in a movie scene that no one really knew what was going on. Um, and then on the Saturday, I went home, basically, or to Leon Mar back to the house. I, <laughs> Sunday of the journey from hell, um, I couldn't get to Yetibor or Gothenburg um, because my trains were cancelled. All the buses were sold out. So I went to my hometown, Lynn Shopping. I surprised my family. I surprised my best friend for a couple of hours. Ended up spending well over £100 on a ticket. Changing my flight to an SAS one, which I was cutting it like this with time. And I missed that one. I missed another flight in Gothenburg because I tried to rearrange that one too through Ryanair. Though technically I missed three flights. So I then had to change to SAS, paying an extra £48 to get on one to Heathrow the like an hour later. I was that tired. I actually scanned my boarding pass on the wrong flight. Talk about embarrassing. Um, yeah, I finally managed to get home at midnight on Monday. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was very strange. But apart from those situations and my time in the press centre, I cannot be any more grateful to this universe for the opportunities it has provided me with becoming press and meeting all these people that have become lifelong friends and having a Greek family there and being on their live stream and just feeling so welcome and partying in Euro Club with all these people. And, you know, I was there to do one job at the end of the day and that was to cover press. And that was to 
make the most of what we had. Um, unfortunately, I did have an incident where this happened and drink thrown down me. But hey ho, these things happen. Um, I'm just meeting new people. You know, I met people from Cyprus. I met people from uh, Turkey, and I met you know people that become my family and so close to me that I still talk to now. And that's the beauty of it. When you come together as a whole and as a collective, you, it's just such a beautiful thing to have. And to know that you had someone to lean on as a shoulder to cry on at that time, it was, yeah, it was a feeling that you cannot describe. And it just felt like something that was real. And it was love and it was genuine. And it was, I'll be there for you as long as you're there for me. And that's exactly what it was. Um, I mean, I showed everyone around my home. Well, not my hometown, but I showed people around Malmö. I showed people what Sweden is like to me from my side and my heritage perspective. Um, I cannot, I'm going to get emotional at this. I cannot thank Lithuanian people, like the Lithuanian press, the Lithuanian public enough for the love I've received, the support. The friends I've made that are just going to stick to me. You're stuck with me now, girls and guys and gays. Um, that I've got and still continue to have. The same with Spain. I never in my life expected that. You know, I'm just a girl from London that works 9-5 and does this as a hobby. Um, you know, spending time in Eurovision tea as of when. Um, meeting new people and being on their channel and meeting Eurovision Tom for a second year in a row who is the nicest bloke on earth um, I have a lot of time and a lot of respect for the Eurovision Tom uh, lots of love to you bro um, you know Slovenian press people that I'm friends with from Slovenian press I cannot thank the public and the press and the people enough for the opportunities for you to approach me and have me on your social media outlets or national outlets, it means more than anything. It really, really does. And, you know, a massive thank you to the artists of this year, even though it was tough, and we know it was tough. And there was a lot of hurdles that we faced, but we faced it together as a whole. I'll see you a bit more because you are artists and you were in that bubble together a lot more. Um, just for allowing me to interview you and maybe get to know you a little bit more off camera just having conversations every now and then to check in how you are and I I can't express my gratitude enough I really really can't and next year in Switzerland I pray to the gods I'm able to go I pray to the gods that I get pressed I pray to the gods that I get but a lot more interviews and just explore peace and love and what we are as a community and not what we face behind closed doors and the other big thing that is at hand, we can leave that out of it. What we are is a community of love, community of abundance and prosperity. And that really, really, really showed this year. Um, but yeah, going back to it, I cannot thank Lithuania enough for everything they have done for me. I really, really can't. And... I should tell you, me a little. <laughs> I don't want to get emotional. Um, oh. I should tell you, me a little. I love I. Um, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I will be reacting next year. And, you know, I'm going to try and drop in and out and react to music from the artists from this year. You know, Ico has an album coming out. <coughs> I've still got laryngitis. Fucking hell. You know, more music from Sylvester Bell. More music from Raven and... More music from, you know, and go out there and just, just reacting to that stuff. And, you know, other artists from last year, like Joker Out, for God's sake. I'm going to see Joker Out again in the summer. <laughs> um, I will be sticking around and I will not stop reacting. Um, it reignited my passion. And I know this is a long video and I don't shut up. I do apologise. Um, but this is just like a massive thank you and my time there. And I've been 50-50 about doing this video um just at the pure fact i <laughs> i didn't know what reaction i would get and i've tried recording plenty of times to not obviously say the country it's countries at hand and the situations that are at hand and you know um yeah i just yeah just thank you i will be around um don't forget to like subscribe 
and Switzerland, we are coming for you. <laughs> I will see you for next season.